reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Lord, great and awesome God, you who keep your merciful covenant toward those who love you and observe your commandments. We have sinned, been wicked and done evil. We have rebelled and departed from your commandments and your laws. We have not obeyed your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Justice, O Lord, is on your side. We are shamefaced even to this day. We, the men of Judah, the residents of Jerusalem, and all Israel, near and far, in all the countries to which you have scattered them, because of their treachery toward you. O Lord, we are shamefaced, like our kings, our princes, and our fathers, for having sinned against you. <clears throat> but yours, O Lord, our God, our compassion and forgiveness. Yet we rebelled against you and paid no heed to your command, O Lord, our God to live by the law you gave us through your servants, the prophets. Verbum da meaning. Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. Let the prisoners sighing come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. Dominus Fobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. Gloria Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. 
Vervam Domini. In recent weeks, I've highlighted a number of really remarkable young men. Spoke most recently about Manuel Federa, nine-year-old boy whom the Lord called to be a warrior of light in the darkness, had a profound love of the Eucharist, of a Spanish martyr of the Eucharist, Blessed Joan Ruiz, of a couple of Italians, Venerable Matteo Farina and Blessed Carlo Acutis. Matteo Farina died at the age of 18, Carlo Acutis at the age of 15. And the thing that unites all of them is that they had a profound love for the Eucharist. And isn't that a remarkable thing, these young men Although they, were, they had friends, they uh, had girls too that they liked, but there was this profound love that they experienced and came to discover in the most blessed sacrament. And especially today, I wanna to talk about this uh, documentary you may have seen last week on blessed Carlo Acutis, the friars and I had the opportunity to watch it last evening, really a profound 30-minute presentation on the life of Carlo Acutis, and I learned a lot of other details about his life I didn't know before. And the title of that documentary is, I Am With You Always. Well, that, those are the words of Jesus, the last words of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel where he says, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. And that's how this documentary begins. And then it highlights one of the most famous of the Eucharistic miracles because it talks about how God is always present to us, but not just a spiritual presence, but a physical, concrete presence, reality. And people have questioned that. It's, it's a presence that's continually real. But in the face of incredulity, of the unbelief and doubt, there have been scientifically inexplicable things that have occurred around the Eucharist, a number of Eucharistic miracles. The most famous of those perhaps being in Lanciano in Italy, had the opportunity when Mother was building the shrine to make a trip over there to see that Eucharistic miracle, quite remarkable, that it was in the 800s or 700s, the eighth century, that the Brazilian monks were in charge of that place and one of them had serious doubts about the reality of the real presence and the bread and the wine became physically human heart tissue and human blood. And that's been preserved all of these centuries, and it was in the 1970s and again in the 1980s, that this was put before a scientist, and uh, his name is a, no a noted anatomy, path um, anatomy pathologist, Professor Linoli. And so he used, as this documentary points out, techniques that we even use today. <clears throat> although we have more assistance with computers. And his findings were published in a renowned journal, a high-level publication, Quaderni Sclavo. And what he found is that what is revered there in Lanciano is actually human muscular tissue of the heart and human blood type AB, which by the way is the same blood type as the blood found on the Shroud of Turin. And never before had all of these extraordinary events, these Eucharistic miracles, 
some 140 of them approved, been gathered and cataloged. 2,000 years of the real presence, 2,000 years of these events to help strengthen our own faith. And the mother of Carlo Acutis, she said that from a young age, Carlo always had interest in the church, in the gospel, in the saints. And when they would pass in front of churches, he wanted to go in to greet Jesus in the tabernacle. And she, would, she said that he would stay quite a long time. Her own growing up, her father was not particularly devout. In fact, she said, I only went to church three times. I only went to mass three times for my first communion, for my confirmation, for my marriage. The only three times she had ever attended mass you know, as a Catholic. So she said, I always say that Carlo was my little savior, my little savior. So after his first communion at the age of seven, she said that he constantly felt this living presence of Jesus. And it led him to introduce Jesus and the love of Jesus to many other people. And one of the people that is highlighted in this documentary is a housekeeper for their family, Rajesh, who was a Hindu Brahmin. And Rajesh said that it's practically impossible for someone with this background to convert to Christianity. But he would take Carlo to school, and Carlo would want to stop on the way back at the church and spend time before the tabernacle. And you tell Rajesh that there is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. And Rajesh would say, well, how is that possible? And little Carlo would explain it to him as best as he was able to. And what Rajesh went on to say, he said that all that Carlo did and said just really struck him in his heart. And Carlo said to him, God lives, the Lord lives in your heart too. And whenever Carlo went to Mass and Communion, he would explain to him the importance of the Eucharist and how it makes people live and overcome temptation, that we can't overcome temptation on our own. And Rajesh said that he talked with such sweetness that, again, it just really touched his heart. Rajesh had dreams about Jesus and the Virgin Mary, and he asked Carlo why he had those. And Carlo said, Jesus loves you too, Rajesh. And he received baptism and entrance into the Catholic Church in 1999. This documentary shows that Carlo loved Assisi. It's got the testimony of different friends and tutors, boyhood friends, and one of his boyhood friends said that one time he and Carlo had gone to get some ice cream and they were walking, they'd gone a, quite a distance from the ice cream shop and Carlo realized that they had given him 20 cents too much in change. And he was insistent, we gotta walk all the way back there and give this back, it's not ours. And so he did. They would come across different people who were homeless. And Rajesh said, I referred to one of them as a tramp one time. And Carlos said, no, you can't use that word. They're all children of God. And he would give his own money, his mother said, to pay for sleeping bags for them or blankets, bring them some of the food from their own table. Carlo, however, discovered his own mission. He noticed that a young, lot of young people, they would have catechism, they would uh, receive confirmation, and then that was it. They'd never step foot in the church again. And he realized, that can't be. I have to do something about this. And so he thought, one of the best ways that I could do this is to present the reality of the real presence to them. That if they could come to understand that Jesus is really present in the Eucharist, then it would help them to come to know Jesus and to receive his love. And so he began to catalog 
all of these Eucharistic miracles, searching, doing all of this research. And Rajiv said he would find him poring over computer manuals so that he could learn how to better catalog these things and make them attractive. And Rajesh would say to him, you need to go to bed, you need to get some rest. He says, no, I can't. I don't have time to rest. I worry about the world. So he had this heartfelt mission for evangelization. As his mother would say, that the greatest love that we can have for others is for the, their eternal salvation. And so he created these Eucharistic panels, 140 of them. He said, if we present how Jesus is present in the Eucharist, they will know Jesus. This is my work and this is my duty. His mother said that he insisted the family would take journeys to places like Lanciano and other Eucharistic miracles in Italy, other places as well, to take pictures because he said people have to see. Being able to see will help them to believe. And then finally, the documentary con concludes with some of his quotes. So Carlo, blessed Carlo Acutis, he said, our goal must be the infinite, not the finite. Sadness is looking at ourselves. Happiness is looking toward God. Jerusalem is right at our doorstep. So he said, we're luckier than those people 2,000 years ago. There would be crowds that would hinder them from getting close to Jesus, but he's, Jerusalem's right outside the door, wherever the nearest tabernacle is. The Eucharist is my highway to heaven. So a beautiful uh, documentary, but even more beautiful, this life of this young man died at the age of 17, of, or 15, of leukemia in the year 2006 and was beatified this past October 10th, 2020. Now, in today's readings, we heard at the beginning of today's first reading from the book of Daniel, chapter 9, these words. Lord, great and awesome God, you who keep your merciful covenant toward those who love you and observe your commandments. We have sinned, we've rebelled. I think we can think of that too, of the new and everlasting covenant that we renew at every mass. The one that would be the fulfillment, the completion of all of salvation history. Lord, great and awesome God, you keep this eternal covenant toward those who love you, who observe your commandments. That's what we're striving to do. And then in today's Psalm, Psalm 79, it speaks of help us, O God, our Savior. What does the name of Jesus mean, Savior? How is he especially present to us in his humanity and divinity in the Holy Eucharist? Where are we going to find help? Wherever the nearest tabernacle is especially. Help us, O oh God, our Savior. And this psalm also says, let the prisoners sighing come before you. Free those doomed to death. Jesus said, the bread that I will give is for a man to eat and never die. Free us from the doom of death. This is the, the food that carries us into eternal life. In fact, Carlos would say that, and his mother was commenting on this, that when you come into the presence of the Eucharist, you're already placed in eternity, in God's time, kairos. That the Eucharist, Carlos said, transforms you that every time you receive, you're no longer the same person because Jesus is working his transformation within you when you receive him worthily and lovingly. He's working his transformation within you even if you don't realize it. 
It already places you in eternity, in God's time. And that continues to transform you. That's why our young men here today, Michael and Luke, faithfully serve on Mondays. And we're so grateful to have them and their witness and example. And then finally, in today's gospel, Jesus speaks about the measure with which we measure. The measure that you measure with, it's going to be measured back to you, but not just that's going to be given back to you. If I, as I often say, God's never outdone in generosity. So you give something like Carlos gave all of his energy and time. We've got to help others to know Jesus and this reality of this real presence. That he gives us even more, pressed down, shaken together, poured into your lap. So they might come up, you know, and they would say, put the, put the grain in here. Well, they could put in a certain meager amount, or they could fill it up, they could press it down, and it's overflowing. And that's what the Lord is saying, that he wants to give us. That when we give of ourselves and love to God and love to others, there's going to be an abundance that comes back to us. And we'll discover that. Charity always has its own reward. We never give without receiving. That's the Trinitarian principle that the Father gives to the Son and the Son to the Father, and that love between them is the Holy Spirit. We enter into that Trinitarian principle when we ourselves are generous and giving, as blessed Carlo Acutis was. So my dear people, let us, let us ponder the example of these young men and boys. Manuel Federa, at the age of nine he died, Venerable Matteo Farina, the age of 18, 19-year-old Blessed Joan Roig, and Blessed Carlo Acutis. May they assist us, too, in growing in appreciation of this gift that is not only a gift, but in which the giver himself is given to us so that we may come to know his love and respond to that love with which we have first been loved. Well, one final thing. <laughs> if you're interested in seeing those panels that Carlo put together, there's a wonderful book with all of these panels that he had put together of all of the miracles. And it's called The Eucharistic Miracles of the World. And it's a wonderful little resource to look through all the histories, all of the places throughout the world, all these pictures that Carlo put together that will help you and strengthen the faith, your faith, as well as those you may share this with, the Eucharistic miracles of the world.